two, one. Welcome back to Let's Clone. My name would be Stephen French, and this is our final episode for Tetris. Although, that being said, I thought this would be a much smaller part, and I, you know, I, I have a big old sheet of shit to get through. Hopefully it's going to be quick. You'll know from the timestamp, time code, length of the video on the bottom. Let, let's just bear with me. Then we're just going to add the polish, we're going to add the sound effects, we're going to add the score. Only a little bit of each, but it's, uh, all these things take longer than I think they will. But now that we're on small face mode, we can start to go right into it. Uh, first up, we're going to introduce the background images. So give yourself a BGR underscore, what do I call it, menu is going to be the first one. We're going to give ourselves a little bit of a menu state. We're going to load in a background. I don't, I'll, I'm going to put all the assets in the, the doobly-doo. Where do I have mine? Assets. Backing grounds. Uh, just menu. Okay. If you want to follow with my offset numbers, but you want to use your own image, that is encouraged. Um, 704 by 704 is the size that I've used. That just allows for our our cell, our grid window to like go in 32 and down 32, so we can use a nice simple offset number. So there's that background. We're gonna go in through here. We're gonna make a BGR underscore main room. Um, load that up. Right here, got a little main image. I've I've left that hollow, I guess. Uh, but, 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 uh, and then BGR on end screen. Nothing fancy yet again. I've just made three super simple pictures that we can use for that. But we are going to need a room. So you're going to create a room at 704, 704. We're going to call this one the menu. Menu, uh, background, whoop -de doop de doo we got a menu, and we're going to hit OK to that. Uh, this one, we're going to need it to be, yeah, the first one. Main, we got to change this guy up a little bit, and this is where everything gets a little bit tricky. So here, 704, 704, and as you can see, where our shit was is no longer a good idea. Um, but if we come down through, we create, that's the wrong one, the main screen one. Uh, I already have the background set to a gray, that's kind of why I left it blank, and also because I want to keep our tile going through. So actually, I'm going to change this one to our tile, and then change background one, which will be pasted on top of it, to our main, and then uh, you can kind of keep the grid. Just drag your, oops, your borders over, and you'll see that it actually does light up at a 3232, but because of Game Maker, if you zoom out, it starts getting all wacky. And I like this to be... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. All right, so the origin point is right there, and I'm keeping that right in the middle. So five cells to the left and to the right, down one. Just works pretty well for me. Here we're going to have the little window for what piece is coming up next, and down here we're going to have the score. But we'll click out of that for a second. Um, duplicate this room, but slide it down to the bottom space. RM and screen. Come into our backgrounds. Whoops, C's and give it our in-screen background where we're just gonna have the final score. Cool, easy enough. A couple other things before we can actually make this all playable is we're going to create a font. I just called this font default because we're just gonna set it as the default font. And this, you don't get the best font selection. I forgot to move the mic yet again, three for three. You don't get the boss, the boss. You don't get the best font selection, but I'm going with the DIN Pro Medium. It's kind of blocky looking. It's good enough. Size 32. Do whatever you want. Import your own font there if that's what you're keen to. That that, that just doesn't really matter. And then sound. Create a sound. We we'll call this SND for sound. Call it music because again, the only music that we are including, the only sound effect that we're using is amusing. The only sound effect that we're using is the background music because it's the only thing I could find as a free usable asset, also in your asset link, tetris.mp3. Give this shit a play. Oh, I muted. There it is. I muted my mic. My speakers. Speakers. Where are we at now? We got that, we got that, and then, so we don't forget, come down into, oh no, macros are, no, all configuration. One of these should have something. How can you not? I'm using it. Hold up. In all of these things, when we add the grid, we're using cell size and grid offset. 
somehow I have deleted those. I don't know when I could have done that. We're going to go to all configurations. We're going to create them back. Cell size is equal to 32. And for me, I am using grid offset. I'm not using a separate X or Y. That should have should make sense by now as to why I'm not. But we're going to create those again. And let me just fucking make sure that they're well, spawn in a grid. I don't need that. Add to grid. All right, cool. They're red. What? The, I don't know what happened to that. I don't know how or why those could have been deleted. Doesn't matter. So we fixed that. So now all of the code that we've applied to the grid in a static, like where the window is the same size of the grid, all that can be offset now that we are in a larger room. Neat. Now, coming up for our score, we're actually going to do all of our score display implementation before we count the score, just because we need the system object to exist in order. And we're just going to do it this way. So system, just like controller, I don't care on having a prefix to it. This one we don't need to be seen, we, so we don't need to give it a sprite, it doesn't need to be visible, but it does need to be persistent Persistent, because we want to maintain that um, that object throughout all of our scenes, all of our our game rooms. Persistent, cool. Add an event, create. I mentioned in the last video that when we put in our randomization, one second initialize system, um, I, would, I did the randomize here. You can do it here, you can keep it in the create event, doesn't make a difference. It's already in the grid event, so I'm going to leave it there. But points is equal to zero. Game Maker has a variable called score, scare, score, and it's red. And I just don't ever use it because whenever they have their own declared variables, I, I ignore them because I want to know what's happening with all of it. So I don't know, use it at your own risk. It's probably fine. It probably works just like a variable with a default value I imagine of zero. I'm not going to use it. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And then yes, draw set font, set this to FNT default. Now anytime we print anything on the screen, it will use our default font. Doesn't matter so much when we're running local to Windows or Mac because it will use whatever font GameMaker decides is the default. But if you ever do export in HTML5, it will not write any of your font unless you've provided a font for it to read. I don't know why it does that. I never saw like a proper warning or heads up that it's gonna do that, but it does that. So you've been warned. Cool. Now we're going to come on into our step event. And this should just be our room transition ship. Room transition ship. We're going to say if room does not equal to rm main. So we are either in the menu or in the end screen. Uh, da, 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 I think yes. If key, keyboard check pressed virtual keyboard enter because I say on the front screen says press enter to begin or press enter to start something like that that's what this is going to do so if you're either on our menu screen or on our end screen pressing enter is going to restart or start the match we're going to do room go to rm underscore main uh, okay and we're going to do one more thing we're going to make sure that whenever we start a new game our points are set to zero that's yeah that, that was correct to believe that that is everything we need in our points or points system step event we are going to have a draw event which this will be interesting because I, I think having this invisible won't matter I think drawing will still draw if we don't see our points our numbers and that that will be the only thing we have to change we're going to draw score um, okay my, my, I'm getting through my sheet a little bit faster than I thought it would. So it might not be a terribly long video because we're not really doing too much. But we're going to draw set. We'll give it a color first. Color. C underscore gray. This is going to be the color of our font that we do draw or write to. I guess, yeah, draw to the screen. I'm also going to draw set H align and V align. And what those are is the horizontal alignment or vertical alignment, respectively, of the text. Um, FA, I don't know what the FA stands for, but FA center, if you middle click on that, you can see center left or right. Uh, likewise, if you middle click on the color, you can see all the different colors or some information about how to kind of derive your own colors. Pretty neat stuff. And then draw, set vertical align, also FA center. Neato. Cool. So now if we have, if the room is equal to uh, the main menu, I guess, or the main game room, uh, calling it main probably isn't 
the most intuitive, but we're going to call it that anyways. And we need to, and these magic numbers kind of suck. You really want to avoid having like uh, coordinate placements that are just kind of hard coded in here because if you ever need to change it, you'll have to change it later. Um, I don't care to fix it because again, I, I made the layout the way I have it. If you change your layout in any way, these are kind of the numbers you're going to change to try and position your text into the, the correct spots. But draw text. Mine are at 523, 447. And we're going to draw points. So this is inside of the game room that is uh, 523 over. It's a 704 room. So most of the way over and then down, not as much most, but most of the way to the bottom. That's that little square in the bottom right. It's going to write our, our points. And I, I found that by putting the image actually in Game Maker Editor. What I did here, if anyone, and it's going to take a minute, but I'm sorry, it could help you out. So we'll use this one for an example. If you edit it, I just took like a, a red line and I'm not going to make sure it's as precise this time. If I drew an X across where I wanted that cell to be, we're aligning to the center. So if we pick this point and we draw, we write a text there with FA align center and uh, for vertical and horizontal, then it'll put it there and it'll stretch it vertically and horizontal to where we need it, or I guess rather translate it to where we need it. But you can see down at this bottom section, uh, it tells you what pixel in the picture you're at. So that's where I was able to find, this one's for the end screen, just where to put the scores. Again, those are the magic numbers you probably don't want to use or rely on, but they, they work for this instance. Now, we also want to draw our score if we're on an end, end screen. So else if room is equal to rm end screen. And these will actually be the numbers that we just saw, but I didn't really pay attention and I haven't written down. So draw text at, where are we at? That's 352, so pretty much in the center of the page, or exactly, and 250. And then here, also writing points, bang it and bang it. So all we've done so far, we've created a system object. Let's come through and put it into our room. Doesn't matter where. Avoiding an oopsie. <laughs> uh, somewhere along my script add to grid. So we're gonna open up this script really quick. And you can see in this line right here, I forgot to add in the offsets. Um, since we weren't using them, it was really easy to miss at the time and we're default to zero until this stage of the game. Add that in there. We were just on, actually, I, I think I played with this, but we didn't actually do anything. I didn't screw it up. Check rows, same thing. Uh, you might have that line, but that line turns out doesn't matter. I don't think you have, I, 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 think, I think everything else is good. So we just put in our system object. We threw it into the game. We're drawing our scores. The scores are not being updated yet, but they should draw into the correct positions. And our grid offset should be good. Here, score should be drawn. So this could actually answer a question that I've never taken the time to learn. Let's see if we set that to visible, if uh, that will show our score. Good, okay. So it does need to be visible. That makes sense to me. Score is zero. We still have just as much of a Tetris game. I'm going to stop now before I start playing it because I will do that. I just play the game way too fucking much. Cool, so we're drawing our score. We have a step event that handles the transitions through the screens. Uh, there's one other bit of, where is spawn shape? Excuse me, now when we get to here and we end the game, right now we're just restarting the game. We wanna get rid of that because we wanna utilize our end screen. So if we end the game, we're gonna do a bit of code here that doesn't matter yet, but it will help us later, as well as one that does. So your first thing we're gonna do room is equal to, oops, or room underscore go to, we can actually do room go to next because in the hierarchy of our rooms, end screen is always after main. This is always always only being run in main, so that works. The other thing we wanna do is audio underscore, I believe it's a stop all. Yeah, stop all. This is for when we do have the music playing, when we end the game and go to the next scene, we don't want it to keep looping. Um, yeah, do that and good. End the music first though, because if you change a room, it might lose access to that controller object and then we can't end the song. End the song first, set the room really quick in a demo that just we get to our end screen and we should be able to still see the, the, the points, the score, which will still be zero, but on our end screen. Hitting enter, I'm just gonna make these boys tall, make these boys tall, that didn't help. And, you know, I could have made it taller, okay. So we're going, we're going, we get one more, it goes, we lose the game. Final score zero, press entry to continue, you go back to the game. Bingo, bango, I say that, but bingo, bango, zingo, zango. I'm gonna keep doing it. 
Cool. Now let's jump into our check rows where I thought I had a problem before and add our actual score. First up, we're going to want a temporary variable called number of rows. Our, well, this is because our score is dependent on how many rows get cleared at a single time. And now here under underscore full, we're going to do underscore number of rows plus plus. So if ever there is a completed row, then we're going up by one. This will loop through and it'll keep identifying completed rows inside of this overall loop. So all of this is gonna keep cycling. Uh, and then once this entire thing is done cycling, we're resetting it to zero. So while it's zero, if we have a completed row, it goes up by one. If we find another completed row, it goes up by two, three, four, that's the most that can be done in a single run. So we're perfect, we get to there. We're gonna come down and then we're gonna add these points via a switch event. So we're going to um, add score, add points, add completed rows, however you wanna call it. But we're gonna give it a switch event, underscore num rows, and we're gonna give some cases. So you have in case of one, because if we have zero, nobody cares. We don't, we don't need to actively add zero points. But if we have a case of one, and this is kind of how the scoring that I found online goes, if you have one row, you're getting yourself, was it 40 points? Let me see where I wrote it. Yeah, so we need system oops, dot points plus equals, wait, 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 is this inside of? There was one place where I need to do something from other, but I don't think, nope, 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 that's display the shape. All right, we're good, we're good, good. I got a little bit sidetracked. So we got 40, and that's in case of one. I'm gonna always take the option of copy paste when I shouldn't, two, three, and four. So in the case of two rows completed versus three rows completed versus four rows completed. If we have completed two, it's gonna give us ourselves 100 points. If we completed three, we're gonna give ourselves 300 points and if we've completed four, we're gonna give ourselves 1,200 points. Let me just double check. We have 40, 100, 300, 1,200. Bang, and we got points. Now, take a second right now, pause the video, jump in your game, play with that, get some score. Might take you 20, 30 minutes before you're actually bored of it, and then come back to this video so we can move on to the next part of the polish. Next on our list for polish, we just added the score that is going to add up as you get the corresponding amounts of rows or number of rows. Uh, but in the top right box, we have that next shape. So let's include our next shape. So we're coming down into our create event for this display. Yes. So we need to create a next shape number. And this is going to be equal to that same choose for what we're going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, which is the seven shapes that we are able to choose from. And then we're going to run the spawn shape because we don't. Actually, don't want this underscore. We're gonna our spawn shape. I can't speak. Spawn shape script, and we're gonna pass uh, next shape. We will handle when we're in there. So come down into your spawn shape script, and we are going to uh, right here index. Instead of equaling this, we already have something that we're going to use. So we're going to use other dot next shape. So the first pass that we run this, next shape has just been created with a random number and it's just gonna be popped up onto the top of the screen. Um, 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 um. And then at the end, okay, yes, yeah, so at the end we just need to do this again. We just need to decide on a whatever the next shape will be. So the only real change that's happening is this one right here. Instead of creating a new index, we're creating that index from whatever var var variable we were already holding onto so that we knew ahead of time what shape would be picked, or rather the code knows ahead of time. And then we've set a new shape where we've set the current shape that's being played in the game, and we are going to decide what the next shape to come will be now instead of having to randomly choose it the next time we run this script. With that information, we can come down, we can create a draw event. Now the same thing is gonna bother us here, so we're gonna create, make this visible, um, and it does have this sprite, but as I explained briefly in a different video of this series, uh, if you do not put, let me just say draw uh, next shape. If you do not put a draw self, even if the sprite is visible, then it won't actually draw the object's current sprite. So it will be invisible to our game grid, but we need that access to be able to draw the rest on the screen. We could do it with the draw GUI, and I believe we could draw it no matter what. We're not gonna, even though this is kind of a GUI. Um, 
our view doesn't move, so we don't have to worry about being able to find the view anywhere in the game world. So it's easy enough, my guy. In the draw, we're going to do variable sprite. Uh, don't initialize it to anything, so we're going to set that as we as we do things. We're going to do uh, variable x offset equal to zero, and a variable y offset also equal to zero. Now in our switch event, this part, uh, well, here we're going to go down. We're going to do a switch event. The switch will be dependent on switch shit. I guess it's going to be on our sprite. No. Oh, next sprite. Yeah. Next sprite. So the next part is right that we've created. We're running a switch event on it. We're going to have that case uh, zero break. But we're going to fill that after. We're just going to do what we need to do at the end first. We're going to draw the sprite. Now the sprite that we're going to draw is going to be what we set to underscore sprite. Uh, our sub image needs, yeah, just to be zero because we, we don't need it to rotate inside of that box. The x and the y that we're going to use are, again, things that I had to do in that silly way. So 523 plus our temporary x offset, and then 173 plus our temporary y offset. Those will be created in here. But what I would like to do for this one, just because I, I didn't feel like, can I, oh, I can't close that. Controller, stay on this side. Give me that draw event. Stay on this side. I'm just going to open up my other older project. Uh, grab my controller, my draw event, make this big enough that I can see all of it. I just didn't feel like writing all this down because I'm just going to have to draw it after. So I'm just doing it this way. And I should not copy paste it because I, I should. I'm just going to type it out with you guys. So we're going to do sprite is equal to sprite shape square. And this is all that we're doing. At, at each step, at each number, we're just setting what sprite would be either um, the correct one or like how we need to shift them around. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So zero. I always come through and do the numbers first, which is probably terrible practice. It gives you a lot of potential to, to think that you've completed a line that you hadn't. So the next one, we're drawing the first L1. And this is all just stuff that I found uh, with just playing. Uh, I did, I guess I named these. I did underscore little x big offset. Here I did x underscore offset. Ugh, I'm gonna fuck myself up with that. I'm probably gonna fuck up some other people with that. I'm sorry. We're doing x offset. I'm, I'm gonna be stubborn. I'm gonna keep it the way that I did it this time. So this is x offset of a positive 16. Down here, which would be for L2, we're gonna have an x offset of a negative 16. Uh, down here for i, we're going to have a y, yes, a y offset of 16. Down here underneath t, we're going to have an x offset of negative 16. Down here under z, uh, z is going to have an x offset of negative 16. That's get, still getting pretty easy for us. And then for s, same thing, negative 16. And then as you can see, our x offset has been created, our y offset has been created, so we know how to shift that image around so it'll be centered in that block, and we've assigned the correct sprite. It's my old project, closing the other one. Get out of here, I can actually just close that one. I don't, I don't wanna confuse myself with you anymore. Very neat, very neat, very cool. Let's go. Open it up, you should have a Zelda, Zelda game, what the fuck, Steven? Open it up, you should have a Tetris game, and we should be able to see. No! No! Uh, next sprite not set before reading. What did I do? Oh, next shape. I'm sorry, guys. Next sh shape. Easy. Typos are my friend. <laughs> Fucking wish. I have enough encounters with them. Hit enter. No! <laughs> what? Sprite shape, why did I, what? Not set before reading, this is draw line 20. Draw line 20. SPR shape 
Oh, I called it I in my old one, and we did straight in this one. I'm sorry. Let's see how many more we have. This is just fun. Enter. Bingo. Fuck. <laughs> this guy's at the side. That must have needed to be a negative 16, and it didn't. But we'll play through. Now we got the S coming up next. That should have been shifted. Probably should have been shifted. Um, all right, so I, I think the only one that I want to fix is going to be... All right, so the green needs to be fixed, and the blue doesn't really need to be fixed, but it should. I would like to see a red L just to have... Okay, so come in here. This is just a little bit of dirty work, and that's why these magic numbers are terrible. This is a, a, a bad style, I guess. <sighs> Excuse me. Uh, two. Which one is two? Shapes. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter if it's two or one. Green is one. So L1, I did a positive 16. We're going to test out a negative 16 just to, to see. And then for our straight, I did a Y offset. Maybe that was supposed to be negative. If, if all of these are negative, that is not... like I'm pretty sure I just compared it directly. I must have changed something somewhere. Um, I don't think that should really happen the way that it did. We're moving on that. That one is okay. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. The T is good. The green is finally good, and the blue is good. Cool. So if you want to pause it at those numbers to get them right, I, I apparently can't get them right the first time. So expect it to be a little bit of a hassle. Neat. We've got our draw sprites. We've got everything that we need. There's going to be one last little step, and for that we're going to add in a new little sprite. I don't think. I I don't think I've put it in here. No. All right, so I'm going to grab it from my other file, uh, and I, I will put it in there. It, it'll be in your assets files. Um, where the fuck does this save? Documents, Game Maker Projects, Grid, Sprites, Images. I have these two little guys. Bang. We've got a, a full music note and an empty music note. Um, I'm just going to center it, center it, this doesn't really matter, M mask doesn't really matter. Come down to our objects, object, we're going to have object, uh, music, controller, I guess we can call it. We're going to give it sprite 16, which should be sprite music controller. Uh, we're going to give it a create event, and this is the last thing that we're doing, this is purely polish. Um, music controller variables. What I we're just gonna call it music controller. Image speed is equal to zero. And we're gonna give it a step event. And we're gonna say if actually uh, music controller mechanics sure I'm gonna say if place meeting um, how did I want to do this mouse X mouse Y self which self I've heard was deprecated but it still works you should be able to use ID there instead of self oh I'm sorry this should be position meeting it's really weird with mouse overs and then if mouse check button pressed wow mouse button underscore left uh, so if you click on the mouse um, I'm going to say why doesn't there image index plus plus so clicking on this which we'll just give it a quick test out just the I guess a proof of concept. Come down here, grab your uh, your controller. I put it right in the center of that square. I thought it looked kind of decent there. Um, when you hover it over it, hover over it, and you click it, it should just uh, toggle from being a zero or a one for its image index, and it should just be full or hollow. Enter. Bang, bang, bang. See, it toggles. Now, when we start our game, controller create event. When we start the actual game, we want to play the audio. So audio, play. 
sound. We're going to give this the sound of music, not song, sound. We're going to give it a priority of one, and we're going to give it a loop of one or true. I've seen some things that say you shouldn't use one as true, but technically one is true. I, I'm just going to use it here. It doesn't make a difference to me. Um, ba, 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 ba. Now, in our music, we're going to do this. Or not that. We're going to say if image index is equal to zero. We're going to say audio resume all. We're going to say else if image index is equal to one, audio pause all. And we're going to see how that works because I've had some issues with things like this not working when I'm almost positive that they should work and I don't feel like going back to check my old code to see how I figured it out before. Music is playing. Hit, oh, I hit a key. Click it, music stops playing. Click it, music's back. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I don't know if you guys can hear that. There we are. We got music. I'm just gonna mute this. Um, just so if that's playing good, I don't wanna hear it. We've got music. We've got a score, we've got some aesthetics, we've got a final screen. Let's really quickly, just because I, I have too much fun playing this damn game, uh, let's get, oh man, I think I've, I've screwed myself up. I'm not gonna actually get a solid Tetris out of this round. I don't think I can save this one. Guys, I, I think this one is fucked. Um, I would love to save it, but I don't think, all right, we're gonna clear that out. We're gonna we're gonna clear that out. So we got 80 points from that little double. Let's get ourselves down to an area where we can at least try to get a Tetris. Uh, solid. Bang, bang, bang. All right, cool. We're gonna start working our way up towards getting a solid. I didn't mean to actually just complete a row. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Uh, here we go. Here we go. I'm not gonna say that every time. Um, um, um. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to save a piece for there. That would be ideal. I, I don't want two of them. That just makes it harder for me. Stop it, I need these pieces later to finish this. Uh, you fucking commie. All right, so we've got plenty. Now, we're in, now we need two of them and we're not gonna get them. Um, all right, well, we got one. Oh, fuck, it's not going to get all all four. Okay, now we'll, now we'll, cool. All right, so we get another blue one, and then we're going to be Gucci. We got, good. So we're at one, well, 280 points. We're about to be at 1,480 points. Let's see if it works. Boom. Bitch. What? What? Come on, these blue ones, dude, they never show up when I want them. All right, now it should bring us all the way up to this guy right here. What's happening? I think I know, I think I know. Remember that time where I said something about there being a thing that you didn't need from the other video? We're gonna do YY++ right here. We're gonna see if, if that does it. I'm gonna do some real time debugging. This is something I had in the original code. I use it again, thought, oh, I don't need that. It doesn't do anything. This might be what it does. It uh, kind of retains how many rows we have so we're not kind of overlooking one on accident and then calculating it in the next frame where it only counts as a single. So I think since I'm not actually doing an animation, I'm not pausing those kills. Technically it erased three and then it erased one instead of it erasing all four at the same time. Give that a little quick test. See if we can set ourselves up with another uh, Tetris. Uh, so we just need a, why are you giving me that? I don't want that now. Um, so we need to set up four completed rows. Good. So now all we're waiting on is a blue, not a square blue, not one of these pinks. Come on, my guy. See what I mean? See what I mean? That's what I have to deal with, which I don't mind because I fucking love playing this. 
My favorite is when you land a T into a nice little T spot. It's just, it's what the world is about. Cool. Now, let us see if we get all the points we're supposed to. 1,200, bingo, bango, zingo, zango. I knew there was a reason for that code to be there and that I just couldn't find it before. Now I can say that we have everything. We even have the music. We've got a game of Tetris. Let's go big face. <laughs> okay, guys, that is all that I have for this tutorial. I know it's not 100% polished. I know there's missing a lot of things, missing some animations for the road breaks, uh, missing a lot of audio files. Hopefully you are accepting of my reason for not including those. And I don't know, it's not exactly a clone. None of these are gonna be exactly a clone. I'm just trying to provide enough information that you can get started holding your hand away through some of the more compl uh, complicated stuff, although none of it is too tough. If you, if it's new to you, it's gonna seem super foreign. One thing that I really love about game development is it's pretty easy to do, but it's pretty hard to learn. This is what draws me towards my tricking and like all of my other favorite things are things that you can be good at after putting in the effort. You have to put the effort in first. Syntax takes a little bit to kind of frame yourself in the, the logic thinking that a computer does in trying to like, all right, how is this gonna handle this train of logic or the, the sequence of events? And then using the syntax of the language is something that you just build familiarity with as you use it more and more. But that being said, we have a working game of Tetris. The marker that I like to use for if a game is good or if it's fun or if it's complete is if you find yourself playing it when you probably shouldn't, when you got some better stuff to do. And that happened to me so much while making Tetris. That's happened to me so much while making the tutorials for Tetris. I just keep playing Tetris. And I found out that it's really fucking fun to play it. It's more fun to play it after you know how to make it. And hopefully I've instilled some of that joy into some of you guys. And yeah, I'm going to sign out. I'm going to go edit all of this, upload our final part. Uh, excuse me. Our final part of Pong. Pong? What's happening to me? Our final part of Tetris. Then I'm going to get to work on our next game. Thank you, Microsoft Office. I don't use that account, so I don't want to know anything about it. Enjoy the day. Thank you so much for being here. I'm still Stephen French, and I should have the next game up very soon. If not, catch me on Twitch while I'm making it in my own time. Deuces.